What is up, Ravens Flop? Huge shout out for your support for the 410 Sports Talk. Chance and Glenn are the best in the business. They're killing it right now. They love talking Raven talk. Make sure you go subscribe to their channel. Let's go, Ravens. Big trust. Hey, guys. Welcome into another episode of 410 Sports Talk. I'm James Haskell, along with my co-host, Glenn Martin. And we are here to talk about a very... Um, a, a, a lightning rod of a story is, I guess, the way I'll say it, certainly among the Ravens community. Uh, and, and it has to do with our buddies over at PFF and their top 50 ranking. Uh, and and so we're going to talk about the, the parameters of the ranking, what we're most upset about, and all the above. I'm sure you guys, have, a lot of you guys have seen the ranking, so you know what we're going to talk about. But it's been a while, Glenn. This report's been out for a few days. I know we're behind it. I took some time off because I got the in laws in town. But you know what? I'm done. I'm mm -hmm. done. My mic has been cooled off, and I need to heat it up because this has got me fired up. Yeah, Jimbo. I mean, you call them the, our friends at PFF, but they're officially off my Christmas card list after <laughs> this one. I mean, they are getting no Christmas wishes from the Martin family this year after the blasphemy that is the top 50. Now, I will say this. They did make it clear in their, their little intro here of how they were ranking them. Uh, and they said that the ranking below is a projection of what we think will happen and not necessarily a reaction to a spectacular or underwhelming 2020 season. Additionally, positional value is not considered here. So safeties, guards, and even running backs have just as good a chance to rank highly as quarterbacks who would dominate the list if positional value was heavily uh, factored. So they put that disclaimer out before the list happened because I think that it if they were obviously if they were valuing uh, you know heavily on positional value it could you know skew the list so i understand why they put that out there uh, so i just want to make that clear before we get into this list now it's 50 long so we're not going to go through every single name mm -hmm. in the list we're going to we're going to highlight a few key names that really kind of pissed us off a little bit with this list and because pff i don't know what they're up to but it's some shenanigans over here jimbo yeah, absolutely. And and before I, I'm going to pull up the list. I got it ready uh, up here. But um, before I pull it up here, one of the things I want to mention is I think the first part of that disclaimer makes the list even more egregious. I understand the second part about the positional value in that, you know, the quarterbacks would be the top 32, basically. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact that they're just projecting because Lamar had a, uh, you already know who we're going to be upset about at this point. I guess I've you already know, I'm sure. But mm -hmm. the point is that Lamar Jackson had a great 2019 season, you know, spectacular, never been done before stuff. And then a still, by by any stretch of the imagination, a career year for a lot of quarterbacks in 2020. So to me, them projecting that he's just going to fall off the bandwagon in 2021 is even more egregious, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pull this up here um, and we'll, we'll dig right into it. I'm going to scoot this baby up. And uh, we'll start at the very top. Um, all right, here we go. Just making sure we can see correctly. All right, so Glenn, how do you want to how do you want to uh, dice? You know, uh, you know, parse this out. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could go through the top ten, and then we'll just highlight after that. So Aaron Donald, yeah. number one, no surprise there. I mean, the fact that sure. he's led the league in pressures three of the last four years as an interior defensive lineman is just absolutely ridiculous. So yeah, no arguments there. Fine. Pat Mahomes, number two. Okay. I'll give you that. That's fine. He's, right. he's been spectacular. Travis Kelsey, number three. So it's kind of interesting that man chiefs got a good start, right? They got two of the yep. top three players in the league, according to PFF heading into 2021. Right. Yep. Yeah, that feels good. Quentin Nelson, one of the most underrated but still very celebrated players in the league at a guard spot from Indy. Number five, Devontae Adams. Six, Khalil Mack, still getting it done. At, yeah. uh, you know, Still at this point. Tom Brady, you talk about still getting it done. What's he, 44, 43. 43 years old. Man, still getting it done and much deserved there. Bobby Wagner, a little bit of surprise here to see a linebacker that high, but I guess they were not bluffing when they said positional value doesn't matter. George Kittle, number nine from the – from the Niners. So we see two tight ends in the top 10. Interesting there. Yep. And then A-Rod wraps out the, the top 10 from the Green Bay Packers. Uh, still not sure where he's playing, if he's playing at all this season, but he wraps out the top 10. So wh wh how do you want to start this? Yeah, where do you so go? there's a couple things. This is where I want to start. When I saw uh, Lamar Jackson not in the top 10, I was already surprised. And then, of course, if you guys know, I scrolled down the entire list. Lamar Jackson's name was not on the list. And then I did it again. 
because I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. And then I said, all right, let me refresh this in case this was last year's <laughs> something of that nature, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Still not on the list. So I, I, that's where I want to start. That's where the chunk of this is going to be. Um, and we'll get into some other names of people later down that we think it's egregious that they're on the list and not Lamar. But to me, I don't think you need to go much further than the top 10. I think Lamar Jackson, if you're just talking about statistics, age and projection is really all you're focused on is projection. So that has to do with age, potential, you know, obviously some of what you've seen in the past, like resume has something to do with projection, mm -hmm. maybe not to PFF, but I think to any uh, reasonable person, right? I mean, certainly what you are, in the past is usually what you will be in the future to a certain extent. The best indicator of future is the past. Right. Absolutely. And so to me, to put Lamar Jackson outside of the top 10, uh, I think is pretty crazy to me. I think that easily you could replace Bobby Wagner uh, with, uh, with Lamar Jackson. Um, I, you know, I, I even think you could go like a, a Khalil Mack or, or I understand Quentin Nelson. People say he's going to be a first ballot hall of famer and this, that, and the other, but, Chris Sims said the same exact thing about Lamar Jackson. If he just turns out eight more 2020 seasons, he's already going to be a first ballot. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it, you're keeping a first ballot out of the, you know, for all tents and purposes out of the top 10. It's ridiculous, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, it's to further your point. So let's, uh, you know, kind of peel back the, the onion a little bit yeah. more. Um, and just, I'm just going to, you know, buzz through and get to, to some highlighted players. Cause there's, there is a bunch of quarterbacks on this list. In fact, there's mm -hmm. six on this list. None of which, of course, Lamar Jackson. So Pat Mahomes is number two overall. Tom Brady, number seven. Aaron Rodgers, number 10. And we have Russell Wilson, number 22 from the Seattle Seahawks. Number 40, Josh Allen from the Buffalo Bills. And rounding out the top 50 at number 50 is Dak Prescott of the Dallas Cowboys. And this is really where I got furious because, okay, so if you want to take position out of it, let's, but, but we can at least compare him to the other quarterbacks on this sure. list, right? Sure. How in the world, Jimbo, how in the world is Dak Prescott on this list and Lamar Jackson isn't? Because here's the thing that baffles me. He had a horrifying injury last year, right? Horrible injury. So even at his healthiest, right, at his best, at his very best, his best season to this point in his career was in 2019. He had 4,900 yards passing. So, whoa, big number, right? He just missed the 5,000 yarder. But 30 touchdowns to 11 interceptions doesn't even compare to Lamar Jackson in that same season who had 36 touchdowns to just six interceptions. And we won't even address the rushing stats because, fr frankly, they're it not just, even in the same ballpark. Yeah, it's pointless at this point, right? Not even close. So how does a guy who in his best season has not come close to the production of Lamar Jackson – and by the way, he's now coming off a horrific leg injury that we – we, at this point, we don't know what he's what what he looks like at this point. They have a beat up offensive line, right? They have an offensive line that isn't isn't what it used to be yeah, when it aging. was one of the best. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, they got some some positional talent around him. But if you don't have the, the the big hogs in the trenches to keep a guy upright who's coming off a horrible injury, how can you possibly project Dak Prescott to have a better year than Lamar Jackson, who, but if you just look on paper, has better weapons than he's ever had. And he looks to have an upgraded offensive line. I, I don't understand how in the world Dak Prescott can be on this list, Jimbo, and not Lamar. Yeah, no, I'm with you a thousand percent. And uh, I'm going to hop all the way up to the top of this list, not because not because I think that that Lamar should be exactly here, but I just want to read you a description. Okay, don't don't you know? Just take the name out of it and tell me who it sounds like to you. Mm -hmm. uh, this person is just different. He attempts and completes passes that no other quarterback in the game can even think about, and he regularly adds more freakish plays to that, uh, to his repertoire. Who does that sound like? Sounds to like you? Lamar. Yeah. So why does Patrick Mahomes get to be number two and that description, and Lamar isn't even on the list? You've got to be. Look, I understand that he's number two, and but. I've said it before and, and people might think I'm hating and that's fine, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. Every day I feel more and more frustrated about this pedestal that Patrick Mahomes is on mm -hmm. and that Lamar Jackson doesn't even compare. Lamar Jackson isn't even his stratosphere, like that. He's not even a respectable foe and colleague. That's ridiculous. I mean, that's insane to me. Lamar Jackson, you can find stats after stats after stats based on age and production that Lamar is in 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 a company of one, 
Mm-hmm. One, not two, not three, not ten. One, and there's more than one of those. You can pull them up. Look, any of you guys, I challenge you. Just go on Twitter, Lamar Jackson stats. That's all you got to type in, and over and over and over again, gem after gem after gem. Right. So it's it's not even like I totally get Dak, Dak Prescott and Deshaun Watson to me are the definition of empty calorie football. Yes. Yes. It just it is what it is. Like. There's no other way to explain it because, yeah, Dak is – And also, Dak did that that the, those years where he still hasn't even come close to Lamar in a in a worse division. I mean, a, a horrifying division, a division right. that – I mean, mediocrity wins that division. I mean, and, and you're comparing it to the North where we had three <laughs> super – I mean, it's three AFC contending type teams and then an up-and-coming yeah. Bengals team. So, I, I, I can't understand it. The Lamar Jackson disrespect is absolutely real. Uh, but let me just let me get into so, unless you got something else on Lamar. Yeah, hey, I was going to ask you this. I, I, yeah. I was going to ask you this question, um, man, and I totally forgot it. All right, go ahead. Yeah. So if you want to talk about some, so there are some Ravens on this list. So let's talk about who did make the list as the Ravens. So we have at number twenty nine, Marlon Humphrey as the highest rated Raven on this list, a cornerback in which has the highest man cover grade in the league uh, over the last couple of years. So Apparently, PFF doesn't value man coverage ability because to be in the top, thir- top 30 and not in the top 15 is kind of crazy to me. Yeah, especially when you consider that there are multiple secondary members above him on this list, including Jalen Ramsey, who continues to get the love and respect of the team uh, or of the league over Marlon Humphrey, despite the fact that Let's remember, Jalen Ramsey, while he's a good player, he has Aaron freaking Donald pushing that pocket and making his job a whole hell of a lot easier the entire time. Yeah, that was an incredible defense as a unit last year. I mean, yeah, as a Floyd, unit. But, I, but uh, before we go even further down this, I remember my question. I want to get your thoughts oh, here. Yeah, sure. So I want to kind of take one step back before we get into those, those other guys here. Else I'm going to forget again. So um, do you think that this – the way that Lamar Jackson has been disrespected in this list and their projection in, you know, PFF is planting their flag saying Lamar Jackson will not be a top 50 productive, you know, player in the C in the year in this, in, in the NFL season next year, which is insane. But do you think it speaks more about Lamar or more about their lack of faith in, in Greg Roman? Because as you know, Greg Roman, the third year of every, you know, of every year that he's at a franchise, they start hot, you know, 2019, just like we started, then they get, eh, 2020, which was, we were way better than, eh, mm-hmm. uh, but you know, eh, in comparison to 2019 and then the third year, the wheels fall off. Yeah. I mean, I think it certainly has played a part in it, but I'll say this, the Ravens have done the most to counter that history by bringing in fresh new coaches to, mm-hmm. to spice up the, the playbook and, and, and change some scheme around and also just kind of revitalize the passing game. Uh, you know, you, you talk, you hear uh, cornerbacks, you know, Marlon Humphrey and all these guys talking about the difference in what the wide receivers are bringing to this training camp as opposed to the previous years that he's been here. I think that the Ravens have done plenty to, to counter that history, bringing in a whole bunch of new uh, talent at the receiver position, uh, as well as those coaches. So I'm confident that they've yeah. done enough and that. And that Greg Roman also is no dummy. I mean, I, I, he knows his own history. He knows what's happened Better in than the past. Anyone. And, and let's be honest, if you look at those instances, those individual teams, and it, it's been a lot of factors that have led to those those collapses more than just, uh, you know, that, that third-year wall that Greg Roman hits. I mean, you talk about the Harbaulk situation going on in, in, in 49er yeah, with land. Yeah, and, and all yeah, that he madness. couldn't get along, and, and it, it, there was a lot going into that. And then in Buffalo, that. he had Tyrod Taylor. Like, you're going to compare more. Lamar Jackson to Tyrod Taylor? Exactly. What more can you do with Tyrod Taylor than what he did? So I, I right. think that, you know, you kind of have to peel back the layers a little bit to see, you know, what happened there. Yeah, there's but- a nuance there. And then the other thing I want to add to that is, and because I agree with you, I think it's ridiculous. But the other, you know, to the other thing too is that even if Lamar is a subpar thrower of the football this year, right, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he does nothing but be but continue to be the best open field runner of the football in the NFL and get over a thousand yards. Running backs make the Pro Bowl for doing that. Yeah. They don't even throw the football. So, like, Lamar is already most likely going to do that. You know, oh, yeah. not, not, you know, people just, you said this before, <clears throat> it's ridiculous how people just poo poo this idea. Oh, yeah, he's a good runner, but wait, wait a second. 
<laughs> they just shrug that runner. off. Yeah, he's an iconic runner of the football. He already yep. has more highlights than than you know career long running backs or of you know of running the football. Yeah. So it's just it's all part of his game. So anyway, I wanted to I wanted to ask that question as well because that's that's something that I've heard as as an idea that people are more uh you know they're 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 putting their confidence in Greg Roman not having a productive season and his history instead of their lack of confidence in Lamar Jackson. So I want to get your thoughts there, but I agree with you 100% your sentiments. And all, and also that you brought up a good point when you talked about the run, you know, his running ability and what that brings. There's running backs on this list, Jimbo, that don't even compare to Lamar Jackson as a runner. I mean, I look at <laughs> I look on the list and I see Alvin Kamara and I go, "Oh, let me look at what Alvin's done the last couple right. of years." You know, he's had to have had a spectacular year. And yeah, he had a ton of touchdowns. He had 16 last year. But he had 930 yards on the ground, Jimbo. <laughs> he didn't How even break 1000 and Lamar did. And the previous year, <laughs> he had 797. Uh, so Lamar he's had not what? even close. He, 1100, 1200. Yeah, yeah, but, right. I mean, yeah. what are we talking about? So even at his profession, Lamar's better. Yeah, at, he's literally at, a running back. He's a runner of the football, and Lamar's better at it than you, bro. <laughs> like, I mean, I I just can't understand this list. I, I I it's driving me crazy, Jimbo. I mean, so even it in his wheelhouse, he's not as good at Lamar, and and that's just a Lamar's side gig. I mean, oh, that, that, exactly. That he he moonlights as a runner, <laughs> and he's and yet somehow. Alvin Kamara is on this list. I, I don't oh. understand it. I can't comprehend it. And then they got guys like Michael Thomas on this list. How is Michael Thomas on this list when we don't even know what's going on at quarterback? So if you're talking about projections, who's the quarterback? We don't know. Is Taysom yeah. Hill throwing him the ball? I, I right. don't know. Is I, it I don't 30 know for 30? And, so, and, and with Drew Brees, if Drew Brees was still there and Drew Brees was still Drew Brees, maybe, okay, I'll get – but he's not, and we don't know who's at quarterback. We don't know if it's turnover machine Jameis, and we don't know if it's Swiss Army knife Taysom Hill. Who, I, I, I can't – but let's get into some other positions. Yeah, that really can't hit water falling out of a boat. I mean, let's be honest. But yet he's going to have the timing, and, and and they're expecting him to pick up right where oh, Drew Brees yeah, uh, yeah. You know, left off, who broke multiple records and still has multiple NFL records. And then and then let's talk about the, the cornerback position because yeah. – yeah, while the Ravens have one on the list, they have Marlon Humphrey on the list. I, I got a problem with a couple of other these uh, these other guys on the list. My mainly James Bradbury at forty seven. While I agree he's an underrated player, James Bradbury is no Marcus Peters. Marcus Peters is an absolute turnover waiting to happen in a division in which he is going to be challenged every week. I mean. James, they talk about James Bradbury on here, who's who came in at forty seven, like I mentioned, and he, they say, oh, he had a career best last year, a career best overall grade as well as coverage grade in the NFC East. Who, who, the NFC East, Jimbo, the vaunted NFC East, who had who had the red rifle leading the Cowboys after Dak went down with that injury. He had a a slew of quarterbacks in uh, in Washington, none of which are are very scary, with Haskins and Alex Smith and 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 whoever else. Then and then they had uh, Jalen Hurts and, and and Carson Wentz and and a bunch of bums in in the in the NFC East and yet yeah. James Bradbury finds his way on this list and not Marcus Peters who was playing in the North who is just stud receiver after stud receiver quarterback after quarter making the top Heisman 10. after Heisman I mean it doesn't end what? let me <laughs> let me tell you this to, to back to back up what you're saying I went over and reference cross reference I mean these guys are just hypocrites at this point I cross reference their uh, top 32 outside cornerback list. Mm -hmm. And they have Bradbury at number five. And it's exactly what you said. They basically said at the beginning, he put up a solid performance against a difficult slate of NFC South cornerbacks in his first four uh, seasons with the Carolina Panthers. But he took a clear step forward in his first year with the Giants in what but division? Yeah. The, the most NFC embarrassing least. division in I mean, football. They're terrible. Right. Absolutely. So that's just, that's complete insanity to me. Like it doesn't take a, a, a brainiac to just look at, at who's throwing the football and who's up against uh, to realize what's going on there. And then they have, they have, uh, let's see, Marlon Humphrey is three on this list with, and he's three overall on the other list, but they also have um, Marcus Peters 10 on this list. Uh, so, I mean, look, Marcus Peters, has 31 interceptions since entering the league in 2015. That's nine more than any cornerback, and he ranks fifth 
for pass breaks up over the pass breakups over the best uh over that same time frame. So he's top five for pass breakups. Mm -hmm. Clear he's lapping the field mm -hmm. in interceptions, and he's not your on your top 50. So that means you think he's gonna tank this year. Yeah. And Bradbury, who has a whopping 11 interceptions in his entire career. Oh, uh, and and you say, so, well, man, I guess if he has – I mean, he just had three last year. I mean, so Marcus had more than that. And you go, well, maybe he's just a tackling machine. You know, he puts up so many tackles. He had two more tackles than Marcus Peters in the entire season. And that's com <laughs> that's combined. So what, what, what are you looking at? And, I mean, are you being challenged at the level of – you know, Baker Mayfield, you know, we're not the biggest Baker fans, but – I think he was like second or third in QBR at the second half of the season last year. I mean, the guy was on a heater. He's got a, a, a monstrous, uh, you know, group of, of pass catchers if you include the tight end and receiving group. You got Big Ben, who's a first ballot Hall of Famer, who's got a bunch of targets around him as well. So I'm not sure how they factored Bradbury being more valuable or a better player than Marcus Peters. I I, I just can't comprehend it, Jimbo. It's driving me absolutely PFF. They're on my shit list, Jimbo. Yeah, there's no other way to put it. Like, think about it. So, obviously, Lamar Jackson was a huge smack in the face. I mean, a punch right in the, the old family. Mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Uh, then, you know, Marcus Peters being left the list. And then on top of that, you own, you have no Raven in the top 25. Mm -mm. You only have two in Ronnie Stanley and, and Marlon Humphrey. Mm -hmm. They must think we're going to be a terrible football team. Like, it's so it's so insane. I can't take it anymore. We, I was excited when these rankings came out because I was like, we're going to do a whole playlist, a whole series on all this, but it's getting harder every day to get excited about this because all it is, is right in the face, <laughs> right? Like that's all it is. I mean, this is insane. I don't know if I'm Lamar Jackson. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm feeling something. Well, let me ask you, this. is there any other players? Like when you look around, not just Peters, but, should Mark Andrews have a problem with this list? We see two tight ends on this list. We see right. Kittle and, and both in the top 10. And Mark Andrews has more pressure on him offensively to produce more in an mm -hmm. offense that throws less and has produced more. He has more touchdowns in the red zone the past three years than all those guys. And he's the youngest. So you yep. want to talk to me about project projection. He's the youngest. Uh, he's the healthiest. If you look at, you know, their, their past. Mm -hmm. He's had the most touchdowns of the past three years, and he's got the most pressure on him. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know why he's not above some of these receivers on this list. When I see, like I mentioned earlier, Michael Thomas at 44, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I would I would definitely consider Mark Andrews a guy that I'm more excited going into this season because of the quarterback situation in Norman. Yeah. I don't know what's going on there. I, I, I don't know what to expect. I see A.J. Brown made a list at 38. Great player. Fantastic player. But Julio Jones is certainly going to take some of his targets, take some of his shine. I mean, I know it's a bit of a pick your poison there, but Julio Jones certainly impacts the value of AJ Brown. And by yeah. the way, Julio Jones is also on this list, uh, quite a bit higher. So I just don't understand the logic going into some of these. I mean, I look at the tackle position. I look at some of the guys that were rated higher than uh, Ronnie Stanley, and it's got me a little upset. I mean, Ryan Ramchek, you know. Yeah, they talk about Ronnie Stanley, and I know he's coming off an injury, but apparently if you look at the rest of this list, that doesn't, doesn't seem matter. to impact. I mean, yeah. Kittle's number nine. He played 400 snaps last year. He's number right. nine. Do they do they reference Ronnie's uh, injury? Because that uh, would be the, the height of hypocrisy. Yeah, I don't see it on here, but what I do see on here is that he's the best pass blocker as a tackle in the league. And what what is the most important job in off, as an offensive protect tackle? The, you got to protect the, the Lamborghini. You got to buy the insurance. Right? Yeah, and by the way, he's he's improved his run blocking throughout his entire career every year. So uh, I, I'm not sure how I see all these tackles like Ramcheck and Armstead and uh, who else is above here. I'm I'm scanning through the list here. It's getting me stirred up here, Jimbo. But I see uh, a ton of tackle. Trent Williams. I get he had a great year last year. So okay, you want to put him up there? That's fine. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beat up Trent Williams. Uh, but David Bakhtiar. Okay, he's a good player, but. You can't Coming have the best serious pass injury blocker. as well. Yeah, exactly. You can't have the best pass blocker, the all pro in 2019, the best tackle in the league. And you, you got them all the way down at 46. I mean, yeah. this list, Jimbo, has got me scratching my because if you would have told me there's two Ravens on this list, I would have said, Well, Lamar's one of them, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I would have bet my house 
that Lamar Jackson on this list. I mean, how can ah uh, they they must are the are there are they Browns fans? Are they Steelers fans? Like, what is it? Why do they hate Lamar Jackson so much? Poo poo his a bit. Lamar Jackson. Let me tell you this, Glenn. I said this before, but Lamar Jackson is the most has the highest impact of any player in the NFL on a football field. I don't care how you want to slice it, how you want to parse parse it up. I, I'm 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 taking him over Tom Brady. I'm taking him over Aaron Rodgers because you have to throw out the entire playbook mm-hmm. when you play Lamar Jackson. He can do so much without depending on others. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it, if you take away his arm, okay, he'll just run all over you. Take away, if you try and take away his legs, okay, he'll throw it right over your head. I mean, right. there's just nothing you can do to slow this guy down. And then just to double down, I'm so, I, I, I got to talk about Bryce Callahan being on this list. Bryce Callahan yeah. of the Denver Broncos is a slot corner. He made his way onto this list. Let me see. Where is he at on this list? He's he number 46. 36, 36 on this list, Jimbo. He has six interceptions in his career okay Okay. he's got six interceptions in his five-year career again Marcus Peters 31 (sighs) and you go well I mean Marcus Peters isn't much of a 1.2 a year right yeah so certainly he had way more no Marcus Peters had 10 more tackles than Bryce Callahan and he uh I mean what what list can you point to where you say he had a better year because I'm trying to look find a, a number here I mean you look at pass breakups. He, no, he's not there. I mean, what he, he literally had half the pass breakups. So wh- what are what are they looking at? So he had 10 more tackles. He had more t- twice the interceptions. He had twice the pass breakups. What and he's left on an absolute island virtually every single play. Certainly yeah. every meaningful play because on third down, you know we're bringing the bringing the house. So he's left on an absolute island. I, I, Bryce Callahan, you're, you're, I'm sure you're a good player. You're not Marcus freaking Peters. Thank you. Gosh. Oh, I don't know how else we can, we can, I wish, look, let, let me, let us, uh, let us tell you guys this, that we're going to do everything we can to get someone from PFF, PFF on this show. Yeah, we uh, tried. They're yeah. ducking us. Ducking us for sure. You guys, if you're out there watching the show, add us on Twitter, get, yes. you know, hit us up in our DMS, anything, because we want to talk. We just want to talk. We'll be nice. We'll, you know. Well, I don't know how nice I'm going to be, Jimbo. Well, we won't get physical. We can promise okay, that. That's true. <laughs> we just want to talk. That's all. You know. We know that. Uh, you know, Baltimore can 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 have a uh, look. We don't play any games. That's right. But we will be nice. In the in it, we will not be physical. Maybe not nice. No, no. You know, we'll be we'll be all right. So anyway, in 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 summary, Lamar Jackson not on the list. Like you said, Glenn Marcus Peters not on the list. Ridiculous. I mean, just ridiculous. Only two Ravens. Uh, Marlon Humphrey and Ronnie Stanley, both in the bottom 25. Mm-hmm. Let us know what you guys think. How egregious is it in your scale of egregiousness <laughs> that Lamar Jackson is not on this list? Leave all your uh, thoughts in the in the comments, and we'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>